when we consider that cladogram of the Tree of Life. There were certain nodes which were numbered, say the animals, let's say node 5, you know, would consist of all of the groups above a certain point in the family tree, mammals were at point whatever, etc. And you could list all of the derived features which evolved at point 5, which would be shared among the animals, or shared among the mammals, or shared among the primates, etc. Not only would this include anatomic, uh, anatomical traits of the nervous system, muscular systems, etc., but also genetic traits where a certain gene family is known from this point on in the family tree. A chromosomal fusion occurred at this point uh, in the family tree. A genome duplication occurred at this point in the family tree, etc. And so the evolutionary model holds that life evolved slowly through a series of transitions and that at various points new traits evolved which would be inherited by the descendants. And so you can look at the distribution of anatomical and genetic traits to see if this is reflected there. Also, you could give an example of are there anatomical traits which are only uh, retained within the mammals or within the primates or within the birds? Are there molecular traits which are only, you know, contained in uh, a certain group? So, you know, the fusion of two parts of the chromosome which are un unique to humans or a genome duplication which seems to be unique uh, to uh, vertebrates and another one to the jawed vertebrates or the receptor tyrosine kinases which are unique to the animals, etc. If the ancestors of land vertebrates were fish, it, it then follows that the tetrapod embryos may possess some features which we associate with fish that the adult tetrapods no longer possess. If mammals evolve from reptiles, it is possible that mammalian embryos would retain reptilian features which adult mammals no longer possess. Only the evolutionary model would explain the presence of traits which we associate with different groups of uh, organisms. As you consider the traits which are present in human embryos, which might include say, pharyngeal arches, or a notochord, or the mesonephros kidneys, or a tail, or a whole host of features given in the videos, comment on how this applies to those predictions of the evolutionary model. Irreducible complexity is the idea that complex traits cannot evolve in steps because if only half of a certain structure were present, or only part of a certain structure, it would be non-functional, and any animal that possessed it would simply die. So dinosaurs could not evolve into birds because what good is half the ability to fly, or half a feather, or half a wing, etc. Um, arthropods could not evolve from worm-like organisms. Mammals could not evolve from reptiles because what good would be half of anatomical features or half of this body plan? And so as you consider the fossils which were presented in the videos, or if you look at the cladograms, as you look at how the anatomical and genetic traits are arranged in life's groups, does it appear as though groups may contain some but not all of the features of a more complex group? Does it appear that the features we associate with you know, the most complex form of life are they irreducibly complex so that the lower forms do not have part of this or some aspect of it? Does it seem that complex features can evolve in stages?